Namaste. The mantra Om Namah Shivaya needs no introduction, at least if you've been following this channel for more than a day or two. Uh, this is the basis, this is the bedrock, the foundation of worship of Shiva. In Shiva Purana and other similar works, it's mentioned again and again and again as being the only mantra you need to know to attain liberation. So in the devotional lineage that I was initiated into back in the 1980s, there's a concept of a maha mantra. A maha mantra is a mantra that's so important, so powerful, that it fulfills the function of all other mantras. In other words, this is the only mantra you need to know. Period. <laughs> Whether you're engaged in the regulative principles of karma yoga worship, ritualistic external worship, or if you have graduated to spontaneous bhakti, because spontaneous is the only kind of bhakti there is, you know, really. Love has to be spontaneous. You can't, you know, uh, call up Uber and order a, a truckload of love, you know, I mean, I wish you could, but actually you can by using this mantra. So what is it about this mantra that's so special? Well, for one thing, it's simple. It's direct. It's easy to practice. Anybody can practice, any human being anyway. And there's maybe there's some animals too, or wouldn't put it past them. Animals are pretty smart. But Aum Nama Shivaya. These five syllables are actually the different parts of Aum manifesting as the five faces of Shiva. So we went over all this, you know, back in the Shiva Purana series, how Shiva has five faces, north, east, south, west, and up. <laughs> So, each of these, of course, has their own name, their own mood, their own meaning, their own special worship and so on. But what you really need to know is the meaning of Aum. Because Aum has five parts, just like this mantra has five syllables. Aum, the uh, Fermata, the hold, huh? and finally the dot, the bindu. So these are the five parts of Aum, and each one gets one full beat, except the silas at the end, it only gets a half. So the whole mantra takes three and a half beats. Ah, see, and each one of those five parts then expands into one of the syllables of the five-syllable mantra, Panchakshara mantra. Akshara means a letter or a syllable, which are pretty much interchangeable in Sanskrit. So Panch means five, of course, Panchakshara five letters or five syllables na ma shi va ya and these correspond to the five parts of all ah the fermata the hold and the bindu so these show how om how brahman manifests in the world as Shiva. We're talking about Sada Shiva here, not uh, the five different forms manifest in the material world as the five Rudras. That's a whole different pastime, a whole different meaning. And that's why the regulative system of worship 
that you know uses fire ceremonies and lots and lots of mantras and everything can only get you as far as the subtle parts of the material world. It cannot give liberation. Why? Because the reference, the, the meanings, the, the things of which the mantras are symbols or metaphors for, are not outside the material world. See, uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, the spiritual master of my Adi Guru, wrote in the introduction to his English edition of the Brahma Samhita that the material demeanor cannot possibly stretch to the transcendental autocrat. The materialistic demeanor, in other words, material consciousness, eye consciousness, ear consciousness, nose consciousness, tongue or taste consciousness, body or feeling consciousness, and then mind consciousness, consciousness of thoughts. These cannot reach beyond the boundaries of the material universe because they're made of material elements. And, as we are fond of saying, <laughs> all fabrications are subject to cessation. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. It means that everything material, even though it may seem to last for a very long time, like Earth, planets, and stars, and, you know, galaxies, and things like that, Whatever is fabricated, whatever is made or created, will ultimately disappear at some time. This is the law. This is the way of the world. This is how it works. So, mantras that represent or address or symbolize forms of the Lord that appear within the material world. And remember, Rudra appears from Lord Brahma's forehead when he's angry. So, Rudra has this mood of anger, and even the prayers to Rudra ask him, you know, please put down your weapons, okay? Just for a minute, <laughs> I hear our prayers. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> even the devotees of Rudra are very circumspect and very careful approaching him. But Shiva is not like that. Sada Shiva is beyond the material creation. And the proof of this is that the only time mentioned in Scripture that he ever appears in the material world is right in the beginning, which is described in Shiva Purana when Brahma and Vishnu had a fight and they were trying to kill each other, for God's sake. And, so, you know, to become, for the sake of being God, each one laid claim to the title of the Supreme, and they were fighting over it. So Shiva laughed. Like, yeah, look at these stupid kids. <laughs> and then he appeared as a column of fire. And neither Brahman nor Vishnu could find the top or the bottom. In other words, it extended out beyond the material creation. And the material demigods, even the greatest of them, could not approach it. So then Shiva appeared as Sada Shiva, just long enough to empower and instruct Brahma and Vishnu, and then he disappeared. And he hasn't been seen since at least not within the material world. Where is he? Well, he's in Shiva Loka. And one of the nice things about this mantra, uh, this prayer, uh, to the Maha Mantra, to the Panchakshara Mantra, is that it has five verses, one for each syllable of the mantra. And each verse begins with that syllable. 
Huh? For example, the first verse represents the syllable na, and it begins with the letter na, the akshara, na akshara. So similarly, the other verses na, ma, shi, va, ya. And then there's a sixth verse. And the sixth verse is in the form of a phala shruti. Phala shruti means, now just hear the result, phala, the fruit, of chanting this prayer and chanting this mantra. And the fruit is that one who chants this prayer and, of course, the mantra that goes along with it, the five-syllable mantra, in the presence of Shiva, goes to Shiva Loka. I mean, what more do you need, you know? <laughs> he doesn't say, like, Shiva Purana describes elaborate ritual worship and recitation of, of Shiva Purana in a temple setting with many brahmanas and all kinds of mantras and arrangements. He doesn't mention any of that. He says, just, you know, go into the presence of Shiva. Now, what does that mean? Well, if you have faith, it means Shiva's holy name. Shiva's holy name is enough. And we're going to go here into a long study, <laughs> the Shiva Sahasranama. Uh, and this is part of the introduction to it. Uh, and you should be basing your whole practice on this five-syllable mantra. And then everything else, all the other names, come as an extension or a projection of that original meaning. So, to be directly in Shiva's presence means to chant his mantra. If you have faith, if you have understanding, if you have confidence in the mantra. If not, Maybe you have to get, you know, a statue of Shiva or a Shiva Lingam, like I have, posted a video recently of it, or even a picture. And so many nice pictures of Shiva out on the internet. Download one, print it out, put it in a frame, and chant in front of it. Chant using beads, a mala, one bead per mantra. And the way you hold it, is like this, over the middle finger, the index finger and the, th and the thumb go like this, Aum Namah Shivaya, and then you pull the bead toward you and grab the next one, Aum Namah Shivaya, Aum Namah Shivaya, Aum Namah Shivaya, Aum Namah Shivaya, like that. So if you base your practice on chanting this five-syllable mantra, Panchakshara Mantra, the Shiva Maha Mantra. You are guaranteed by the greatest Acharya of Shaivism, huh? Adi Shankaracharya, that you will attain Shiva Loka. Now, we're going to start a series soon that's going to reveal Shiva Loka in all kinds of detail. And it's going to blow your mind. <laughs> it's blowing my mind just to think about it. Uh, but uh, this mantra will take you there. You know how I'm talking about in the series on God GPT? About riding a mantra into Svapna and Sushupti? Well, this is the mantra. This Shiva mantra, this Shiva Maha mantra, has all powers, all potency, can reveal everything, can give you everything, and all you have to do is understand the meaning and chant this little prayer in front of Shiva every morning and chant, you know, a thousand names or so, a thousand mantras, and you will go to Shiva Loka. I'm going, come on with me. <laughs> oh, Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya